are watching Caitlin Today. On today's episode, we will be having college fashionista blogger Rebecca Brill, followed by a community outreach special with Windsor Food and Fuel Bank, as well as Brooks Brothers Golden Fleece Foundation. Hey, it's Caitlin, and I'm about to interview Rebecca Brill at Wesleyan University. So can you tell us what is a college fashionista? Well, the website College Fashionista features college campuses from all across the country and even some international colleges. Mm -hmm. And what a, what a style guru, which is my position at College Fashionista, does is you go around campus and you photograph people whose style you think is interesting and then you write about their outfits and mm -hmm. you know what trends you're looking at. Tell us about your journey as a College Fashionista. Well, I applied to be a style guru at the end of last semester mm -hmm. because they were having, they were choosing new people for this semester. So I applied to that, and then I was lucky enough to find out that I was chosen as a style guru. Mm -hmm. And then I just started, I followed their directions and I started photographing people. Mm -hmm. um, I, they, I was assigned the column, let's hear it for the boys, and yeah. I didn't know that much about men's fashion. <laughs> and I would have to go around finding men whose outfits that was interesting. So at first that was kind of a challenge for me, because I, I can't say that I really noticed men's style before that. Right. But now I'm like very aware of what guys around me are wearing. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your style? <laughs> um, in the middle of high school, I guess like I was looking for some sort of creative outlet, right. and I started reading a lot of different fashion blogs and kind of experimenting with my own style, mm -hmm. weirding out my friends a little. <laughs> <laughs> I started like going to the Goodwill a lot and looking right. for interesting pieces. So who most inspires you in the fashion world? I really like Lana Del Rey's style oh. with her flower crowns. Right. Um, I think Elle Fanning is really well dressed. Um, Chloe Sevigny. Um, and then also just like a lot of movie characters and TV characters, I would say, give me my inspiration. Book characters also, I say, like, what would this character <laughs> What are fashion must haves for both male and female students? I've been noticing a lot of like tailored shorts for men, mm -hmm. kind of like a little bit of a fancier alternative to like basketball shorts or loose cargo yeah. shorts, which I like. Um, for women, I've been seeing a lot of like long full length skirts that reach like mid calf, kind of 50s style. Yeah. Um, I think that's really cute. For <laughs> what about footwear for both men and women? Um, I've been seeing a lot of like brogues and oxfords and kind of like. Um, more dapper stuff, mm -hmm. more dressed up than a traditional sneaker. Um, saddle shoes are really cool. So do you think we're kind of transitioning back to like the 1950s? I think a little bit. I think that people are kind of putting in a bit of an effort. I know a lot of the 90s was like, let's not care about what I'm wearing and yeah. throwing on an oversized flannel. And I think that was trendy recently. Yeah. But now I see people like putting in a little more effort and looking a little dressed up and buttoned down. What do you see trending for males in the fashion world? Well, I think that fashion is kind of like broadening its view of masculinity, which is really good because I've been seeing a lot of more flamboyant clothes on the runway and like bright pinks and pastel colors and things you might traditionally associate with women. So I think it's good that like men can be more creative and yeah. you're not just seen with like dressed like a woman that you're experimenting with different colors and textures. Um, Comme Garçons did this like really cool thing for fall 2013, which was like a lot of pinks and greens and like flowers on like men's suits, which yeah. I thought was really cool. What do you consider a major fashion faux pas? And have you ever made one yourself? <laughs> well, I'm not one to like fi follow style rules. Yeah. Like, I, my clothes don't usually match, but I don't really <laughs> think that's a faux pas. I think it's when your clothing doesn't fit you right and you're self conscious and you're tugging. That's the worst thing yeah. you can do. I've done that before. And the whole day you're just pulling at your outfit. Is there a noticeable difference between East Coast and West Coast styles? Well here I don't quite notice it since I'm on campus and yeah. everyone's in one place but I feel like West Coast style can be a little more relaxed and East yeah. Coast style is a little more formal. Now what about the style on the Wesleyan campus? Um, I think Wesleyan students since it's this is a pretty liberal campus and yeah. people are definitely very creative you can definitely see that in the fashion. I see people wearing like all sorts of thrifted looks, mm -hmm. um, a lot of crazy fashion. I, yeah, definitely. This is definitely a really inspired place for fashion, and a lot of people seem to get their inspiration from like the things that they're studying. Yeah, and it's really eclectic here. So now we're gonna do rapid fire questions. Favorite magazine? The New Yorker. Heels or flats? Flats. Skirt, pants, or dress? Oh, dresses. <laughs> Backpack or tote? Um, backpack. Thrift 
or retail. Correct. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rebecca, for doing this interview. Thanks so much for having me. All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. Listen, look. Uh, it's J Unity. Yeah, yeah, J -Unity. yeah, yeah. Labyrinth. Express yourself. Cover. Lego. Listen, brother, look. I say the same thing twice. I'm awkward when I speak. That's crazy, bro. Trust. Look. And got the perfect yeah. smile. Don't turn, turn heads on my street. Look, listen, I'm trying to be a superstar like everybody else We are, you know Trust But being myself is something I do well See, whatever you do Look, yeah, yeah Do it, girl Listen up, look uh, You see, whatever you do, do, do Low, low, low Do it, girl Cool, it's time now Look, uh, let's kick it. Express yourself Express yeah, yeah, yourself. Yeah. Express yourself. Look, verse two. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Listen, look, huh? look. I don't make the papers. I'm far from JLS. It's far from JLS. Try and gather X Factor. I'm not what they expect. Well, it won't be long before my turn is next to express. <laughs> but with all due respect, see whatever you do. Yeah, yeah. Do it, girl. Listen now, hop bit now. Let's see whatever you do, 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 low, low, low. Do it, girl. Listen, it's a little rap time. J Wells, let's uh -huh. get it. Listen, uh, it's good to express, cause nobody can't knock you as long as you're trying your best. Well said, don't change for no one, just be yourself instead. instead. And that's when you achieve real, real respect. respect. Uh, and hate and stay vexed while you stay blessed. Yes. Knowing that JU's reaching for success, pretty simple. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. less. Hey. Listen, uh, listen, yo, uh, uh, express yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. See it's not what you look like Why doing what you doing Express yourself Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah I'm here with Jane Garibay today President of Winter Food and Fuel Bank She's going to inform us a little bit about this food organization. Hunger doesn't appear to be a problem in Windsor, but everything isn't what it seems. Can you tell us more about this problem? Yes, it's not what it seems. Um, in Windsor, we have 40% of our students on free and reduced lunch. That means they meet the federal guidelines mm -hmm. of a certain level of income. Um, so we do that equals out to about 1,600 students. Right now we have registered over 400 families mm -hmm. using the food and fuel bank. And it's people that um, are coming for the first time. They might have been even donors before, but that now they're in need because of the economy. Mm -hmm. Now, we have the Windsor Food and Fuel Bank right behind us. Um, Jane's going to actually take us through. I'd love to. It's a very interesting place. Um, the food bank is located here at 599 Maddianic Avenue. Mm -hmm at the community center and when you come in this is um, the entrance area and there's lots of boxes and stuff because this is where the food first gets delivered mm -hmm. so it comes in here and then after it arrives here um, we go into the processing room right now where's the processing room? right over here is the processing room so our staff member here that works the food bank is um, Ted mm -hmm. Ted will then take those in they bring it here, they check in, they check for expiration dates to make sure the cans are dented, that the food is good, um, and they do, and that's where they do all this right here. Mm -hmm. Now, not that many people know about the Windsor Food and Fuel Bank. Can you shed some light on the subject? Yes. The Windsor Food and Fuel Bank has two components. One is the actual physical location where we are right now, and Social Services runs the Fuel Bank. That means they take in the application, process the families, distribute the food. But there's the whole other side, which is the Food and Fuel Bank organization, mm -hmm. which is a volunteer board that does all the money, fundraising for money mm -hmm. and food, um, that services the food bank itself. Mm -hmm. Now, I see behind you, you have another storage area. Now, what yes, is this? Yes, we do. This is a, even a bigger storage. For example, last year we had 11,000 cans donated from mm -hmm. Canstruction. Right. 
and this is where we stored them. This is where they organize it once they've been processed and deemed good foods. And so you can see, like over here, one of the favorite strawberry jam, <laughs> peanut butter's a favorite, spaghetti yeah. sauce, common items. And so when a person comes, they fill out a form to get um, certain foods. Mm -hmm. And so the volunteers come in here and choose from the shelves. Right. So you are often confused with food share. Can you tell us the difference between you and food share? We help Windsor residents. It's neighbors helping neighbors. So all, everything we do is for Windsor people where food share is for the greater Hartford area. Mm -hmm. Although that's where we go to purchase our food. But if a Windsor person donates to food share, we have to go buy it from food share. Right. Now, can you tell us a little bit about this hallway right here? It's another area of organization. Here's the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. This is the more common items that go out very quickly. Um, the tuna fish, um, Chef Boyardee, spaghetti and meatballs. Um, so it's just another storage place where they use so that they can put the packages together. Right. So, so how many people do you have that like put this together? Do you get most of these from um, like stores or do you get these by donation from people We get them themselves? from all kinds of places. We get it from Food Share where mm -hmm. we a dollar gets us five dollars worth of food. Mm -hmm. um, companies in Windsor are incredible. They do food drives all the time and drop off in truckloads, schools, students, clubs, you know, even the Chamber of Commerce at their concerts, people can donate. So food comes in in many ways, shapes, and forms. Mm -hmm. We get individuals that just come by and say, here, you know, here's a bag of food. We do do a monthly food drive up at Stop and Shop mm -hmm. all year long and during the good weather at Geisler's. So that helps, and people are very generous. Where does the Windsor Food and Fuel Bank receive its funding? Um, we do an annual appeal. Mm -hmm. And um, people are very generous. Uh, it goes out to about 1,300 people, and we raise a third of our funds from there. We also um, receive funds. We're doing two fundraisers in May. The mayor has declared it Neighbors Helping Neighbors Month. Mm -hmm. And we are doing a Walk Against Hunger with Food Share. We hope to raise about $10,000, so wow. that's really good. And we're doing a new um, program this year, Five Fridays for Food and Fuel and we're asking businesses to allow their employees to dress down in jeans mm -hmm. for five dollars a week. So that would be twenty-five dollars an employee wow. to dress down. Um, ING did that for us last year and raised over eight thousand dollars. Wow! You have four hundred of their employees did it at twenty dollars. It was incredible. So we're trying to make it once a year where we have this huge and it's about the small business too, just community, people being aware of hunger mm -hmm. in May um, is I think it, I believe it's the National Hunger Month also, mm -hmm. um, but it's also a time when people don't think of it because the weather's coming. People right. thinking of barbecues and vacations and schools getting out, but people are still hungry. Mm -hmm. Oh, so who's this? Oh, this is Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Hi how are you? Good. How are you? Good, Good stocking the shelves, yeah. huh? Well, we're always stocking the shelves with all of our donations here at the food bank. That's awesome. So, um, I'm here in an interview with Jane. Can you tell me um, who is able to receive assistance from the food bank? Um, sure. Well, anybody that's a resident of Windsor that meets certain um, eligibility criteria based on their financial situation is eligible to receive food from the food bank. Um, all someone would have to do is to come into social services and fill out an application. Mm -hmm. It's pretty mm -hmm. simple. Now, where and in what way is the food and fuel distributed? Um, the food is distributed through the food bank here. Um, we're at LP Wilson Community Center, mm -hmm. and we have several different food distribution programs. And the fuel is also distributed through our offices um, through a caseworker who provides the energy assistance mm -hmm. applications. Wow. And that's also mm -hmm. for anybody that lives in Windsor that meets um, certain financial criteria. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what's in that next room right here? Um, well, in the next room right here is a kitchen that we share with the Windsor Senior Center. Mm -hmm. um, and we have freezers that we use to store meat, which we receive from food share as well as the local grocery stores. Right. And also our walk-in refrigerator where we store all of our produce. Okay. Um, so this is our walk-in cooler that we have, mm -hmm. um, which we keep stocked with fruits and vegetables and other produce items that we get from food share mm -hmm. as well as from some of the local grocery stores. Um, we have some food programs where the local grocers can bring in food that they weren't able to sell, but that is still good and we can give out. Um, like this week, we got eggs from Target. Oh, wow. So it's really wonderful to be able to give out those things to people that come in for the food bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also have 
three large freezers where we store our meat products. Right. Um, this is one of them, and right now you can see that we have um, we have meat, we have fish, and um, we also have some large cases of pizzas. We got oh, pizzas wow. from the oh, fridge here. Nice. Yeah, so it's really great. Um, we never know what we're going to get, mm -hmm. and so it keeps a good variety for when people come in and we can offer them some different choices. Wow. Um, the Food and Fuel Bank has been involved also. But Chris is part of Hunger Action Team, mm -hmm. which is an organization, and they're doing backpacks. Yep, we do um, a Weekend Wheels program, which is mm -hmm. the um, weekend feeding program for kids in school with um, families that are having low income. Mm -hmm. And every Friday they go home with a backpack full of food. And we also just started a new program called Groceries to Go, which is a supplemental food program for our seniors in the community. And that's every other Friday. And we're also a mobile food share site. Oh, so wow. every other Friday the um, food share truck comes up to the outside of the building here mm -hmm. and people line up and get um, bags full of produce. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so. you asked the question whether um, Windsor had any low-income <clears throat> families to think that the backpack came about because there are children that right. do not eat on weekends. So they don't come prepared to sc for school on Monday morning and it's not until they get their free and reduced lunch or breakfasts. So it takes teachers, say, until about Wednesday for them to become functioning um, students. And right. we don't think that happens. Um, it's probably not as prevalent here as it is in Hartford, but that's why they started the backpack wow. program. That's a good program. Now, how can our community members get involved? And can anybody else outside of Windsor help? We do have other people outside of Windsor because they may not have a food bank in their community that they can help out at. Mm -hmm. um, so they can either call social services here at LP Wilson um, to volunteer, or they can go to windsorfoodbank.com, um, mm -hmm. excuse me, .org, and um, on there they can sign up to be part of the board to work on committees I like to work on five fridays right. or for the walk against hunger we're looking for lots of donations and walkers for that yeah, and people can um, do the same with um, windsor social services to sign up to be a volunteer mm -hmm. we always need volunteers for the food bank and mobile food share and the weekend wheels as well as um, some of our other programs or um, can get in touch with us to hold a food drive and we would work mm -hmm. with um, Windsor Food and Fuel Bank to coordinate that. Thank you for Thank doing you. this interview with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you it. for doing this and for helping us get the word out. Oh, no problem. So now you've heard it from me, you've heard it from Jane and Kristen. Now go out and help Windsor and let's get this food bank stocked up with cans and lots of money. We're here today at Brooks Brothers on Madison Avenue, here in New York City. Our guest today is Emily Antonetti, and she is the Vice President of the Golden Fleece of Brooks Brothers. Can you tell us more about the history of the Golden Fleece Foundation and its work that it's doing? Uh, the Golden Fleece Foundation is a charity that was established within Brooks Brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's our corporate internal foundation uh, that we created and established in 2007. And the reason for that was uh, we believe as an organization in giving back and in giving back to the community in giving uh, back to our associates uh, and we felt very strongly that we wanted to make a statement right. and a statement to our, our associate base as I mentioned and to the external world as well. And it is a, an umbrella organization for all the things that we do mm -hmm. from a nonprofit or charity driven cause marketing uh, point of view. Right. Um, we have a, an owner, our owner, Mr. Claudio Del Vecchio, uh, the owner of Brooks Brothers today, uh, has a very philanthropic mind and heart mm -hmm. and uh, believes that uh, it is uh, not only a responsibility mm -hmm. to be able to give back but a, a privilege and so we created the foundation to make a statement about who we are. I know that you're in partnership with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and the both of you recently helped two girls dreams come true. Can you tell us about this event? We have a program with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, we do many things with them but mm -hmm. this particular program is called uh, Well-Dressed Wishes and in Italy, mm -hmm. the two girls uh, in Italy, Julia was the wish child who's wished this particular uh, trip to New York was for. Uh, our Italian stores, we have a few stores in Italy, mm -hmm. they got together over the holiday and wanted to support a particular wish from one of the Italian um, wish kids. Right. And so this, they chose this particular wish 
uh, which, as I said, was to come to New York City. And they raised enough over the holiday season right. to pay for Julia, her, who, her best friend, and their parents to come to New York City for a week. Mm -hmm. So we just hosted them at Madison Avenue here in New York City oh, on their nice. trip. And it was a wonderful way for us to sort of close the circle by having our Brooks Brothers Associates engage in Italy to, cr to provide the WISH grant and then for them to come here full circle and welcome them and we treated them, had them dress up for the day, outfitted them in uh, some stuff from our Red Fleece collection and they just had a great time. Wow. And we love to make it very personal so we ask questions like, uh, not only their age and what their sizes are, but what are their likes? What are their dislikes? What kind of candy do they like? <laughs> what do they do for fun? Uh, because we very often will go out if buy their favorite candy or have pastry or a cake here in balloons. Uh, if they like a particular show, we might go or a, or a game on um, the internet. We'll buy them whatever it is that you know. It's just kind of nice to give them a couple of presents. Yeah. they feel special. And, and that's what really that we're trying to do. What types of charitable events has the company hosted? The Golden Fleece Foundation has two events each year mm -hmm. nationally, and one in April and one in uh, December. Mm -hmm. So in April, the Golden Fleece Foundation supports the Make-A-Wish uh, Foundation, mm -hmm. and we give about 4% of our sales during that time to make to actually to the Golden Fleece Foundation, who then pays out to uh, make a wish. Right. And the same in December, however, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital mm -hmm. is the beneficiary of that particular event. But perhaps one of the most important uh, events that we have that has become a tradition now here at Brooks Brothers is our holiday event, oh. which is held. Uh, uh, in uh, the month of December, usually the first or second week. Mm -hmm. It ties in with our Golden Fleece Foundation event, but it's become a, um, a signature event uh, for people to come and enjoy a night of holiday excitement. And I think this past year, we had maybe more than seven or 800 people here in this store. Wow. Every level in the store is, uh, has something fun and holiday going on. And uh, Marlo Thomas from St. Jude mm -hmm. Children's Research Hospital, Danny Thomas's daughter, uh, who's very involved with the campaign and the hospital, um, she comes and she uh, is a great celebrity to have. Uh, everybody recognizes her and <laughs> they all want to talk to her. Uh, and we have Santa, we had Wynton Marsalis, we had a uh, cast from Motown perform, we have the Harlem Adult Choir uh, come and sing. There's wow. all carolers, lots of refreshments and hors d'oeuvres. And if for the kids, we have a great balloon guy. He makes tremendous <laughs> balloons. They, they, uh, they're amazing. They're work of, works of art. And we have cookie making <gasps> and decorating and uh, card decorating. Uh, for everyone. So there's something for everyone uh, to enjoy and have fun with. And we really wanted something that set us apart in the city right. uh, that could be very holiday-ish. And that's it. And now it, we've seen it grow every single year. Uh, and different celebrities we will get to come. Uh, Joe Jonas and his wife had come one year. Oh. This last year, uh, Brooke Shales has come. So it all depends who our PR team and St. Jude's team is able to get on board. But um, it is uh, a lot of fun for all of us, and it's all for a good cause. You touched upon this philosophy, a culture of caring with me earlier, that Mr. Del Vecchio, the owner and CEO of Brooks Brothers, has instituted. Can you expand more upon this idea? Well, he instituted it in, in initially, probably not with the idea of culture of caring mm -hmm. uh, initially, but through the efforts of uh, creating the foundation, um, making a stand to give back, uh, creating our internal associate, helping associate program that's called the Tyler Hughes Foundation, mm -hmm. that what's evolved, which I think is really important when you do something like this, it was more organic than, you know, defined early on. So if sometimes when you allow an initiative like this 
to kind of go on its own and grow, mm -hmm. um, certain things will come out of it. And what we realized is we were really establishing and helping to create a culture of caring. Mm -hmm. And I really can't recall where exactly that terminology came up or mm -hmm. who, who brought it up, but that's what we are. And it is, that's our internal use of, of the way we describe what we do. Mm -hmm. Externally, we tell people uh, and, and like to communicate and talk about our social purpose platform. But our culture of caring is very important to us, and particularly with the Tyler Hughes Fund, as I think I might have mentioned to you, mm -hmm. is uh, only associates, uh, the corporation does not help support it. Uh, we all, all of the associates across the country, there's about four to 5,000 of us, right. we donate money and time for a fellow associate who may have themselves been diagnosed with a uh, health challenge mm -hmm. or has someone close to them in their family and they need time and they not, might need some medical assistance. Right. Uh, and they would submit a grant and then there's a board of directors that reviews the grant and nine times out of ten it is made. <laughs> and, uh, and now we have wonderful stories from our own associates that come back and tell us that if it hadn't been for the Tyler Hughes Fund, they don't know how they would have survived it. Right. So you can just then think about what that does to the, the pride that associates have about what we're doing mm -hmm. with our culture of caring. Now what sets you apart from other companies and corporations with this philosophy of culture of caring? Actually just that. I think that the way that we do it mm -hmm. is different than the way that other corporations do it. First of all, we're a private organization. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to deal with stakeholders or stockholders. Right. We don't have to do a corporate social responsibility report mm -hmm. like other people do. Right. Uh, and I think the difference for us is that we can make many of our own decisions as we think we should make them uh, for the betterment of our associate base and our customers or the community. And I think that gives us kind of a freedom uh, to do what we want. So we really, the fact that we have an internal associate uh, fund, a lot of companies do not have that. Right. We were just recently visiting with one of the top uh, 100 best companies uh, to work for that's in Fortune magazine. Great organization. And we started to tell them about our Tyler Hughes Fund. They were surprised. And so we've never heard of that. Now here is a, we're not in the 100 best Fortune, uh, right. 100 best companies to work for in Fortune yet. I <laughs> hope someday we will be. Uh, but here they are telling us that what we've done, because we felt it was the right thing to do, mm -hmm. uh, is something that they would now like to do. And in, in fact, we've been talking to them the last couple of months and they are in the process of developing their own internal associate, oh, wow. helping associates. So I think that's, that's a piece of it. But I think when you look at it all together, what we're doing and how we do it really does set us apart from other people. Right. How do you see the future of Brooks Brothers in the Golden Fleece Foundation expanding five years from now? Very good. Oh, well that's what I dream about <laughs> all the time and that's, uh, that's what we think about. There's a lot we want to do. Um, recently, uh, a couple months ago, we surveyed all of our associate base and we asked them about social purpose only. So there were three areas of the uh, survey. Right. The first was, what do you do what personally in your own life to give back? So do you volunteer? You know, If you do, what kind of causes are important to you? Mm -hmm. Where do you volunteer? How often? How long? Uh, do you give money to different charities? What charities are important to you? What causes are important to you? And the second portion of that survey was all about what they think that how we're doing right. with the causes that we're working on and uh, have in our portfolio. And the third one was what would you like to see us do in the future? And uh, the majority, hands down, is not something that we didn't know, which is great because this helps to reinforce mm -hmm. where we think we want to go, is the whole localization piece. Right. We believe we've got the national platform set mm -hmm. and we have some community level, local level piece done, but we need a corporate program right. that will allow us uh, to have that sort of reach within each individual community where we have our stores. Right. So companies that are doing things like this very well are Macy's and, uh, and I think Whole Foods does it well as, uh, as another example. Mm -hmm. So we'll work on that over the next five years and there's also a possibility that I'd love to see 
at some point, um, and this also was uh, confirmed in the survey, that we get to the point where we're able to put perhaps a percentage of our, our sales or profits into the foundation right. and uh, create a, a grant-based program uh, that could align perhaps with the, uh, our six values. It's great to see an organization as large as Brooks Brothers reaching out to its community. Thank you so much for this interview. Well, I'm happy to do it for you, Caitlin. Thank you very much for having me. Now, look, uh, express yourself, yeah, yeah, express yeah. yourself, express yourself, yeah. uh, express yourself, yeah, yeah, express yeah. yourself. Yeah. Express yourself. Yeah.